Hello and welcome to UK Saunas. Today we're going to show you how to assemble one of our outdoor saunas. The first job is to place the base in the finished location of the sauna. It's important that this base is level in all directions and strong and firm enough to take the weight of the completed sauna and any occupants. Before going any further, it's now important to ensure that the base is level in the two planes as shown. You're now ready to start assembling the walls. Note how the outside face of the wall is slightly longer and overhangs the base. This helps to create a weatherproof seal. The second wall is now ready for fitting. This fits on the base exactly the same way as the first wall and you must ensure that it is fitted tightly up against the wall with the rebated area on wall 2 fitting over the locating strip on wall 1. Now ensure that the wall is fully seated against the first wall and then proceed to fasten the clips as shown. You can now move on to fitting the side walls. These fit in exactly the same way as the two walls that you've just assembled. It's now time to assemble the front door section of the sauna. This front section of the sauna uses a different method of fixing. Rather than using clips, it uses hooks to fix to the two existing sides and needs to be lifted into place. Fitting the front door panel is one of the more tricky operations and the more people you've got to help you the better as it does get a little bit frustrating if you're trying to do this on your own. Once all the lugs are lined up, as you can see from the video, the door panel drops quite easily into place. After you've fitted the door, you can either fit the interior or move straight onto the roof and fit the interior when the roof is fitted. As you can see from this video, we chose to fit the interior before we fitted the roof. This was to make it easier for us to film. However, if you want to fit the roof first and then work on the inside, you can do that without any problems. To fit the interior, start with the two tier benches. Firstly, fit the high bench supports to the outside wall and the floor as shown. Do this for the supports at each end of the high bench. Then move on to the end supports for the low front bench. Once these low supports are in place, find the middle point and then fit the middle support section for the front bench. This should screw to the floor as shown. To ensure that the low bench centre support is properly aligned, you'll probably find it easier to put the long back support rail in place before fixing to the floor. Now that all the supports are in place, you can fit the front panel for the low bench. This is simply a case of screwing in as shown on the video. There's two screws at each end. You can now plug all the cables into the sockets as shown. Depending on the model that you've chosen, yours may have a different number of plugs and sockets. Just make sure that all plugs and sockets present are connected. Once all your plugs and sockets are connected, you are ready to assemble your benches. On some models of sauna, you may need to remove the element covers in order to fit the benches properly. The element covers simply unscrew. You are then free to fit the benches. Please note you should take care not to disturb any of the cables that you previously plugged in. The backrest for the lower tier bench also acts as the support for the upper bench. And on models with a single high level additional bench, the support will also be on this backrest 
This needs to be positioned to the top as shown on the video to act as a support for the high level bench. On saunas that have carbon heaters, some of the bench backrests also have heating elements. You should plug these in whilst you're assembling the backrests. Once the backrest is in position, it's simply secured with screws as shown. The top benches then simply sit in place. Once the benches are complete, you can re-secure the element cover back in place with screws. The roof construction on an outdoor sauna will require a minimum of two people and will involve working on top of the sauna so you must ensure that you've got the correct safety equipment and that you've also got access to ladders and the equipment that you would need to work at height. To assemble the roof you simply place the ceiling onto the pre-built sauna cabin. The ceiling will have strips of wood or lugs which locate into the walls of the cabin. You need to ensure that these are located correctly and that the ceiling sits flush with the walls of the cabin. Most models of outdoor sauna have the electronics and electrical package located in the roof space. However, some models will have this located under one of the benches. On the model here you can see that this is located in the roof space and the cables must be threaded through and into the roof void before fixing the ceiling down to the walls. Once the cables have been threaded through you can then proceed to screw the ceiling down to the walls. You're now ready to start connecting the cables that you've just threaded. This is quite straightforward. The cables are colour matched, so black cables go to black cables, white cables go to white cables, and IEC cables plug into IEC sockets. You can now start the main roof assembly. This begins with the main centre support post. This is pre-cut and will fit over the support buttons that are fixed onto the back of the ceiling board. Fix the support post in place by diagonally driving a screw through the support post and into the ceiling support button. You now start fitting the diagonal external roof support beams. These are fitted from corner to the centre post, from the centre of each wall to the centre post and screwed firmly at the top of the post with a screw and then down to the ceiling board with a screw at each end. Great care needs to be taken when you're working on the roof that all your weight is supported on the roof support joists and not placed on the plywood ceiling. This will not be strong enough to take your weight. A lot of people prefer to use a scaffolding board or something similar to spread the weight evenly across the roof. You're now ready to start placing the shingled panels on the roof. These are split into quarter panels and you should ensure that the bottom edge is lined up nice, square and straight with the edge of the roof and ensure that the other two sides sit nice and square on the joists or support beams that you've just installed. Once you're happy with the positioning of the panel, screw through the face of the panel and into the joist or support beam. This will later be covered by the corner shingle covers. You should use at least three screws along each support beam. Continue installing the quarter panels in the same manner until the roof is complete. Don't worry about any small gaps between the quarter panels because these will be covered up later. As long as a quarter panel is sat firmly on a joist or support and screwed into place, that's good enough. Once you've got your final quarter panel installed and screwed into place, you're then ready to start installing your shingled quarter panel corner cover strips. These should be placed flush with the bottom edge of the roof and then screwed into place directly onto the surface of the roof. The screw placement is important and it must be placed underneath a shingle on the quarter panel cover. Lift the shingle up and place the screw through and then gently allow the shingle to sit back down and cover the screw. This ensures complete water tightness. The shingled quarter panel cover strips should be fixed in place with at least six screws. That's three down each side, two at the top, two in the middle and two near the bottom ensuring at all times that the screws are covered by a shingle. Once your corner covers are fixed in place, you can then fit the cap or cupola. It's not possible to lift the shingles on this and you will have to screw directly through the surface of the shingles and into the roof. 
Once this is in place you need to cover the head of the screws with roof and gutter sealant. This is supplied with the sonar. Now that the roof's completed you can fit any ancillary items such as door handles etc. Once all the ancillary items are fitted you're then ready to start putting masking tape onto the sonar so that you can seal the sonar against the weather. The sonar must be sealed at panel joints. Also it needs to be sealed wherever a vertical strip of beading meets horizontal strips of wood. Also around the tops and sides of window frames but please note don't seal the bottom of window frames any seepage will then drain from the bottom of the window frame and it will allow it to dry out. When placing the masking tape allow approximately 4mm from the beading. This will allow the sealant to be smoothed with a finger and pressed firmly into the grooves in the beading. Once all the masking tape is in place you are then ready to start sealing using the clear sealant that is included with the sauna. You now need to fit your ionisation and sterilisation unit to the inside of the sauna. This unit simply plugs in and screws up to the ceiling on the inside of the sauna. Full instructions on how to use this are included. Please read them carefully. Because you cannot be inside the sauna while sterilisation mode is switched on.